all goes according to plan, then this video will be uploaded on July the 30th, 2021, the date on which Isaiah Rashad finally released his second official studio album, The House Is Burning. As fans, we've waited almost five long years for this day, a gap that is nearly unheard of in the rap game as we know it. Given our planned punctuality, do not expect any analysis of that album. We will most likely approach that album later down the line when it's had time to breathe. But for now, we're going to be doing this. Well, what is this exactly? Think of it as a sort of state of the union address. It is the capturing of a moment, this moment. If you're watching this on the first day of upload, the day that fans can finally hear the house is burning front to back. So in that sense, this video will be more of a status report, an unprofessional psychoanalysis if you will. Whatever you want to call it, we hope you enjoy and join us in delighting in the glory of one of the genre's most unique voices. The Sun's tirade opens with a frustrated voicemail message from TDE's then president Dave Free. You don't want to get your next album out? You don't care? You don't care that they want to hear your next album? Free asked impatiently. And fans only had to wait about two and a half years for that album to materialize. Now we've waited twice as long for what has finally arrived. The house is burning. The story is all too familiar by now. Rapper releases album, everyone likes it. Rapper announces a follow-up due soon. It takes longer than anticipated. Fans get upset. Hell, a certain Christian billionaire genius is leading his fans through his fourth or fifth iteration of that same cycle as I write these words. After Sylvia Demo dropped in early 2014, newfound fan fervor was ravenous for more new material. TDE was looked at quite favourably at the time and understandably so. In the time it took Isaiah Rashad to release The Sun's Tirade, the label released two new albums each from Kendrick Lamar and Schoolboy Q. The seemingly endless amount of time they made fans wait for Tirade was forgivable given how well the label was doing. Even the relatively weaker projects from J-Rock and Ab Soul were well enough to tide fans over. Was it frustrating that roughly a year passed in between Isaiah tweeting that the album was finished and turned in and the album actually dropping? Sure, but the album we got was great and is well beloved by fans. And after all, he began dropping hints that a new album was in the works only a year later. Surely Rashad wouldn't put his fans through the ringer again, right? Well, we all know the answer to that one. It isn't like he is deliberately withholding music to be a jerk, though. In his incredible cover story for The Fader, Jeff Weiss put to words a great deal of the struggles Zay endured in putting this new album together. His story was sadly a common one we see in the hip-hop world. I encourage you to read it if you have not, but it essentially boils down to addiction, ego, being taken advantage of, and mental illness. A perfect storm for a killed career. Still, fans were not going to let him off that easily. I mentioned that around the time of Tirade's release, TDE could do no wrong. Attitudes towards the label's output have shifted greatly, however, since then. 2017 was the last big year for the label, with the highly anticipated new releases from Kendrick Lamar and SZA being massive hits, rightfully so. Still, pandemic aside, it is 2021 and Kendrick has not followed up damn. SZA has not followed up Control. J-Rock is a more than capable MC don't get me wrong, and always someone to watch out for, but he's never been the most exciting artist on the label, nor the most standout presence. And Absol, I mean, where is Absol? It's been almost as long since his last album as it has been since Rashad's. Legitimate disdain for TD's lack of consistent output aside, the drought is finally coming to an end. 2021 is the year that Isaiah Rashad, after five years, releases The House Is Burning, and that day of release has come. As of writing, we have heard three advanced singles from The House Is Burning. All of them seem to be pointing to a contemporary minimalist sound. Zay has clearly not lost any touch with both his Tennessee roots and the laid-back nature of his adopted West Coast home. The first single, Lay With Ya, features up-and-coming Memphis MC Duke Deuce, whose album Duke Nukem is one of the best in hip-hop in 2021 so far. The Tennessee connection runs deeper though, with a sample of 3-6 Mafia's riding in the Chevy featured heavily during the song's intro. This particular song is a pretty strange choice for a first single I think, being a Tennessee trap banger it is not completely out of the line for Zay, but 
It's not the sort of sound people might expect if they have just come from Sylvie and Tyraid. Additionally, Zay's flow is measured, his verse is brief, and his delivery is stone cold, meditative, and borderline monotonous. From what substance can be pulled from his verse, it might seem that he is setting aside a callous attitude towards women in favour of a long term relationship. Last year you was my, now you my baby girl. But again, this song is spare. It goes pretty hard, but it's an unusual piece overall for Zay and Duke Deuce both. Well, okay, what about Headshots? This was the second single, and its title suggests a linkage to For the Score. Keep in mind, this was the excellent song from The Sun's tirade. This is a much more familiar vibe, and it definitely earns its name. It has that slow, groovy quality that much of Zay's best songs do, while also obscuring a dark tale in its catchy melodies. As the title indicates, it's a song about gun violence, with the chorus being written in such a way that it can either be about being the one who takes the shot or being the one who receives the shot. Zay gives us two full verses on this one, sharing the ability that was only teased on Lay Witcher. It is full of wordplay further cementing his talent at conveying the pain and trauma of violence and loss in a way which translates through the smooth yet sombre beat. I bet many stoners hotbox their cars to this one, only to find themselves tear-stricken by the end. So far there is a minimalist banger with a heavy 3-6 influence and a southern fried R&B laced tribute to the people who are no longer with us. The latter of these two is much more in line with what your average fan would expect. There is one more single available now and it is entitled What You Said, which features rising singer I Am Dochi and prolific Texas rapper producer Cal Banks. If this song tells us anything it is that it's going to be impossible to extrapolate one particular sound or vibe for this album. What You Said, unlike the previous two singles, is a synth and 808 style beat. It shares a minimalist aesthetic with Lay Witcher, but lacks that song's booming bass and heavy groove. Musically, this one sounds more in line with something you would hear from Playboy Carti than from Isaiah Rashad, which tracks with my earlier statement about the contemporary, in the moment nature of these songs. Lyrically, it also shares something in common with Lay Witcher, exemplifying a change in Zay's outlook on love and romance. Here, he had too many hoes in my face. I had to cut him off. I done focused on my one of one. This one also features a prominent guest verse, meeting Zay's vibes very well. Her angelic R&B style singing voice, while clearly influenced by Zay's longtime collaborator Scissor, adds a special component to the song that elevates it, even if it is not the familiar throwback which Headshots was. So what is the House of Burning going to sound like? Well, as I write this, I do not know. I'm assuming we're going to get several songs that defy our expectation of what we know an Isaiah Rashad song to sound like. It sounds as though he is embracing contemporary trap sounds more than ever before, not unlike what Kendrick went for on Damn, much like Vince Staples' recent record. These songs sound deceptively simple, short and to the point, with not a word wasted. But Headshots points fans towards the idea that it will not be a complete change of pace. Isaiah's one-of-a-kind fusion of the South and the West Coast is what drew me to his music when Sylvia popped off. Additionally, it sounds like we may get some love songs, or at least songs that are about throwing away the loose sexual lifestyle afforded to many popular rappers in favour of monogamy and companionship, which is a concept I am looking forward to hearing more about from Rashad. Truth be told, I am moderately lukewarm on Lay Witcher and what you said as songs, but maybe they will all make more sense in the context of the album. In any case, it is an exciting time to be an Isaiah Rashad fan. Thank you for watching.